I do notice when I see these overlanding vehicles, they're all nice and shiny, all pretty looking. And that's cool, man. I, I will admit they do look cool. And I'm a guy, so I know what they're thinking. So when they're at work and they have their cool overlanding vehicles parked, they're hoping someone's going to walk up to them and say, Hey, man, cool awning. Or, hey, man, that's a cool... uh." It's a cool high lift jack you got there because you know it's your pride and joy your ride right so I get it maybe you're you don't want to go camping you don't want to go off-roading you just want to stand in the parking lot park it have it look really pretty and hope someone will be like sick awning man cute Tacoma nice little rooftop tent Oh, dude, your add-ons look sick. Oh, thanks, man. Spent a lot of time on them. I just went out mudding yesterday. Where do you normally go? Where do I go? Where do you go off-roading? Where do I go? You do go off-roading, don't you? Where? Where? I mean, with all the money you spent on all that. Where? How many of you have gone from a truck to a van I know a couple of you have. This is a couple of days after off-roading. I wanted to film it before the rain came in. Should rain tonight. I like it when this thing is cleaned up with tire shine, but I think it looks even better when it has that just got done off-roading look. There's a dip. Shout out to Pink50. He sent me that clip on Instagram. Check this out, an overlanding vehicle that's actually dirty. What? Went off-roading last week, Lone Pine Van Meet. One more big expense on this van, re-gear and rear locker. And then little things like a front mount tow hitch and a winch, one more recovery point. When it's all said and done, this will be about $15,000 for the van and all the upgrades. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about all these cute overlanding vehicles. I see them all the time. I see them at work too. I always spot this Toyota Sequoia at work. It's super cute. It has a big ARB awning and a rooftop tent. Also ARB matching accessories. Hopefully this person goes out on adventures. It would be a shame if they didn't. This is really cute. I like it. See the other side. Maybe he's just on Instagram and he's like, about to go out on adventures, guys. I do notice when I see these overlanding vehicles, they're all nice and shiny all pretty looking and that's cool man I, I will admit they do look cool and I'm a guy so I know what they're thinking so when they're at work and they have their cool overlanding vehicles parked they're hoping someone's gonna walk up to them and say hey man cool awning or hey man that's a cool uh that's a cool high lift jack you got there because you know it's your pride and joy your ride right so I get it Maybe you're, you don't want to go camping, you don't want to go off-roading, you just want to stand in the parking lot, park it, have it look really pretty, and hope someone will be like, sick awning, man. But my mission with my channel is to get people out there, get people, especially the van guys, like anyone's welcome to join us, but it's obvious I have a bias towards vans, and I want to see you guys with the cool van build actually get your van build out there go off-roading go camping because it's good for you and I'm always gonna say this I know there's some younger people who watch my channel and if you're a younger person wanting to start a van build I'm always gonna push you to that direction because when you do a van build it really does help your self-esteem and that's a key part of growing as a person is uh, building up character building your self-esteem because when you do a van build you learn things like uh, my cool awning man I compromised this all I did was use some uh, 
roof rack gutter mounts. That's it. Porch light. My uh, high lift jack mount. This is actually from a Jeep Wrangler. Like this is supposed to bolt onto the hood and I just bolted it onto my bumper. So you get creative. So I figure um, I don't want to buy method wheels. I'm poor. So I just spray painted the stock steelies black and put some chrome lug nuts. And I think it looks cool. It looks tough. Uh, fender flares, you know, I uh, compromise this. These are just fender trims. Bushwhacker fender flares are $600, $700. This was $100. I just painted them with Plasti Dip. They were chrome. So this is just a futon bolted on. I use. I made a little L bracket right there. See? It's just bolted into the floor. And then the back right there just bungeed into the factory bracket. So it's half bungeed into the factory bracket. And then the front, I used an L bracket to bolt it in creative solutions solar I learned that on my own another shout out I want to give see my favorite part about YouTube is interacting with people helping people so I want to give a shout out to oh yeah this is the last video I dropped very high effort video 23 minutes long it was a response to a uh, adventure ready van life uh, if you need a four-wheel drive or a lifted van to go camping. So high effort video. So there is Adventure Eddie right there. I got the idea from him to do this video. And shout out to uh, Campos Vasquez. I confess I am a lifted van degenerate. That's what I like to hear. So I've been chit-chatting with this guy in the comments right after the van meet. Every time I do a van meet, there's a new face in the comments. And that's what I like to see. I want to see you guys join us. But um, this is not his van. But he messaged me or um, linked me to this. And he said he has one of these. He was going to go a four-wheel drive conversion. But now I believe he wants to lift it. So that's going to be really cool. You know what I say, man? I say we're budget sports mobiling. But the thing is, you know, you see those Earth Roamers, Unimogs, they're all awesome vehicles. We all like ridiculously big vehicles. And when you have a lifted van, this is like the closest you could get to having like an Earth Roamer, Unimog on a budget. I mean, vans are cool because they're like nice, sizable vehicles. They even stand out among other overlanding vehicles. They have that uh, nice imposing presence to them. A beast, even among other overlanding vehicles. In my opinion, this is the perfect size for an RV. It's like this. I think my van is a nice sizable vehicle. The only thing missing, I, I kind of wish I could do it sometimes, is stand up. It's no big deal. Like right now I'm cool with that. Maybe when I'm older I'll want to stand up. But when you look at this, it looks like it has the same wheelbase as my van. And then when you look at the back tire, it looks like it has the same amount of length of my normal van. It's a long vehicle. I believe it's right at 20 feet long. So the, extent, the um, standard model looks like this. And the extended vans, all it is is the extra window, extra 18 inches, four just tacked on, bam, that part. Kind of goofy looking actually, that they didn't extend the wheelbase like the GMs. On their extended vans, they uh, back the wheel out, but Ford, they just tacked on 18 inches. It's an ugly cool in my opinion. I, I do like the look. But yeah, this looks like about the same length. Holdfast asked me, how much would you sell your van for? What is the dollar amount you would sell your van for? It's like this. If my channel hit 50,000 subscribers, I would be able to afford something better. So I would want 15 for my van. No, no less than 15. That's what I put into it. And I know you normally can't sell your vehicle for what you put into it. But that's what I will want for my van honestly i'm not asking 30 for it i would want 15 for it with the rear lock or everything i would want what i put into it uh, most likely i'm never gonna sell it because i do like it i 
Like I said, sometimes I wish I could stand up, but it's a good size. It's big enough to be cool, but still small enough to be fun to drive. It's not like a, it's not too cumbersome. That being said though, like let's say I had 50,000 subscribers. Sell this van for 15, this van right here, or this RV right here is 31. So I would be at, this would cost me 15, right? Sell my van for 15, this would cost me 15. Put another 5,000 for a lift and rear locker. And this would be a cool setup actually. But I know these, uh, I mean I've been in a regular RV like this and this one's small. This one looks like it's under 20 feet, like my van. So I do like the size of this one a lot. But I know this style RV sounds like junk inside going down the road because I've been in one. I, I was in a brand new one when I was younger. My uncle had one. He had like a 30 foot one. But going down the road, it sounded like it was going to fall apart. So, dream setup. I would need 100,000 subscribers to afford this. But this 4x4 Chinook right here. This one is a 57 grand. Close the door. But this is a $57,000 Chinook. But look at this thing. This thing is cool. And it looks like it's about the same length as my van and not much wider. See, I do like how there's extra body width to these, but not much. So that helps the interior space a lot. So it's still van length, just about van width. So it's the perfect size. Same interior as my van. Because that's what it is. It's my van up front. Same dash. I always liked the interiors of Chinooks. I actually copied it. See, driver's seat and the sofa bed is right behind the driver's seat. So that's my inspiration. And the Coachman's, the Coachman Class B's, that's what I copied. Yeah, so it has everything you need. Very nice vehicle. And then, a, yeah, it has a bathroom and a shower, so. 100,000 subscribers sell my van for 15 grand and pick this up. I would be able to afford it with my extra YouTube funds. If I had 50,000 subscribers, maybe something like this. But that's just dreaming. I'm just daydreaming. I have no intentions of selling my van. See, I'm always thinking to myself, man, do I need the bigger roof to stand in? But then again, at the end of the day, it's all about proportions, right? Like, this is the perfect size. I mean, it's not the perfect size. My Geo Tracker wrecks this thing in off roading. It always will. Even if this was four wheel drive, my Geo Tracker is the optimal vehicle for off roading. But I look at it like this I'm building this up so that I'm capable at a place like Fonts Point. Like, I want to get into the heart of Fonts Point, and that's perfect for me. So, this thing is not so, um, it's not so cumbersome to do stuff like that. So that's, that's my whole intention. When I'm thinking to myself, man, I need an RV. An RV would be a lot better. I always remember this is the whole mission is to go off-roading at a spot like Fonts Point. All right, that's a little chit-chat with you guys about van stuff, overlanding. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah, hope to see you guys at the next meet we had um the first van meet was me and holdfast two people at this last van meet i was joking with lane holdfast i was like you know what i think only two people me and you showed up for the first one because people probably didn't trust me they were probably like who is this guy and i understand 100 percent so i told them you know what as this grows, people will see that it's legit. So first van meet was two of us. The third one was me, Holdfast, Lane, Jason, Adventure Ready Van Life. That's three. This third van meet, there was five of us. So we went from two, three to five. And it was supposed to be seven. I, I actually saw one of your guys' uh, name on one of the campgrounds, like reserve tag. And you uh, contacted me that you couldn't make it because you had a family to deal with. And that's cool, man. Family always comes first. But the potential for this one actually showing up appeared to be seven. I know uh, Jason Adventure he told me some people couldn't make it due to the weather. So it might have been more than seven. And now I got new people 
talking to me in the comments interested in this uh, every time i do a van meet there's someone new in the comments interested in doing this and i think that's really cool i really want to grow this because this hobby has meant a lot to me and i want to see you guys get out there because it's really healthy to get outside you know i i say like on forums man people want to be the king of the forums like that's why i um prefer youtube more than message boards a lot of times on message board it feels like people just want to flash their money and show they have the nicest coolest overlanding build but they don't actually go outside a lot of times i don't feel like there's camaraderie on these forums it's just people showing off and it's okay to show off it's okay because you know what if you show up at one of these van meets and you got cool gear i'll be the first person to be like hey man cool awning nice porch light you got there but it's more than that it's actually hanging out with the good people but on the forums a lot of times it feels like that's all it is is showing off who has the best build so you know my goal is to uh my goal is to get people out there and enjoying life you don't need the best build i'll be the first one to say you know, oh, i'm never gonna have the best van build and i don't care because i'm proud of this three years in the making lots of overtime i'm proud of what i have this is this is my mentality in life when i was eight years old i went to the philippines and i haven't been back to the philippines since i was eight my van is nicer than the shack my parents lived in when they were kids they still had their shack when i went to the philippines when i was eight i feel very blessed that i have a vehicle nicer than my parents home in the philippines